Did you know a world leader was almost killed by a poisoned cigar? Or that another fought off an assassin with a cane? What if a single move could have ended Hitler's reign? These are the dark and untold truths of history's most shocking failed assassinations. Find out more as we dive into these incredible stories. Welcome to Ancestral Archives, your treasure trove of historical wonders. We bring to life the untold stories, the hidden gems, and the remarkable people and events that shaped our world. Join us for a journey through time, where history comes alive. Our first story takes us back to January 30th, 1835, when Andrew Jackson, the seventh president of the United States, stood outside the US Capitol, unaware that history was about to take a dramatic turn. Enter Richard Lawrence, a disgruntled house painter harboring deep-seated delusions. Lawrence believed the government owed him a fortune and that Jackson's death would somehow release these funds. With a determined stride, Lawrence approached Jackson, armed with two pistols. He pulled the trigger on the first, misfire. Undeterred, he pulled the second, another misfire. Was it fate, or did the humid Washington weather thwart his attempt? Jackson, known for his fiery temper, wasn't one to retreat. He lunged at Lawrence with his cane, beating him back until bystanders intervened. Imagine the scene, a president, cane in hand, standing resolute against a would-be assassin. Lawrence, later claiming divine inspiration, was deemed insane. This episode painted Jackson as more than just resilient. It underscored the precariousness of power and the unpredictable nature of human intentions. However, Jackson wasn't the only leader who faced danger with fortitude. Our next story involves a former president who, even after being shot, delivered a speech for 90 minutes with a bullet lodged in his chest. In 1912, former President Theodore Roosevelt was campaigning as the Bull Moose Party candidate when an unexpected turn of events unfolded in Milwaukee. John Schrank, a deranged saloon keeper, fired a bullet at Roosevelt, which was slowed by the president's steel eyeglass case and a thick speech manuscript lodged in his chest. Despite the injury, Roosevelt's resolve remained unshaken. In an extraordinary display of fortitude, Roosevelt delivered his 90-minute speech, blood seeping through his shirt. He began with, Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know whether you fully understand that I have just been shot, but it takes more than that to kill a bull moose. Schrank believed Roosevelt's bid for a third term violated political traditions. Roosevelt's defiant survival underscored his legendary toughness and had significant political repercussions. The divided Republican vote ultimately led to Woodrow Wilson's presidency. But as remarkable as Roosevelt's defiance was, it pales in comparison to our next story. Imagine a plot so daring it involved planting a bomb at the heart of a dictator's stronghold. Stay with us as we delve into the audacious attempt to end Adolf Hitler's reign in 1944. Our next tale of survival brings us to the dark days of World War II, deep within the fortified walls of the Wolf's Lair. It was here, in 1944, that a plot to end Adolf Hitler's tyranny reached a fever pitch. Colonel Klaus von Stauffenberg, a decorated war hero disillusioned by Hitler's brutal regime, became the central figure in Operation Valkyrie. With a heavy heart and resolute mind, Stauffenberg entered the conference room carrying a briefcase packed with explosives. The air was thick with tension as Stauffenberg placed the briefcase just feet away from Hitler. The room buzzed with the chatter of high-ranking officials, oblivious to the impending doom lying silently beside them. Stauffenberg excused himself, a bead of sweat tracing down his temple as he exited. Moments later, the bomb detonated shattering the room in a loud explosion. The walls shook and smoke filled the air, carrying the acrid smell of burnt debris. Chaos ensued as screams of agony pierced through the thick black cloud. But fate intervened cruelly that day. Unbeknownst to Stauffenberg, someone had moved the briefcase, sparing Hitler from the full force of the blast. 
the dictator emerged with minor injuries, while those around him lay dead or dying. The repercussions were swift and merciless. Stauffenberg and his fellow conspirators were hunted down, tortured, and executed. Their bravery, however, did not go unrecognized. This bold attempt highlighted the profound internal resistance within Germany and became a symbol of the moral struggle against Nazi oppression. But Hitler wasn't the only leader who escaped the jaws of death. Our next story takes us to the heart of Vatican City, where a spiritual leader faced an assassin's bullet yet emerged with a message of forgiveness. Stay with us as we unravel the incredible tale of Pope John Paul II. Our next story unfolds in the heart of Vatican City, a place of peace and spirituality. On May 13, 1981, Pope John Paul II delivered a sermon to a sea of devoted followers in St. Peter's Square, unaware that danger lurked among the faithful. Amidst the crowd stood Mehmet Ali Aka, a Turkish assassin with ties to far-right militant groups. Concealed within his jacket was a pistol, and within his heart, a mission to end the Pope's life. As John Paul II waved to the adoring crowd from his Pope mobile, Arca seized his moment. A sudden crack of gunfire shattered the jubilant atmosphere. The Pope slumped, crimson spreading across his white robes. Panic rippled through the crowd as the Pope was rushed to the hospital, his life hanging by a thread. The smell of gunpowder lingered in the air, a stark contrast to the sanctity of the square. Surgeons worked tirelessly, battling against time and injury. Miraculously, John Paul II survived, and his recovery was seen by many as a divine intervention. But the story did not end there. In an extraordinary act of grace, the Pope visited Aka in his prison cell, offering forgiveness to the man who had tried to take his life. This act of compassion resonated around the world, symbolizing the triumph of forgiveness over hatred. It was a powerful reminder of the Pope's unwavering faith and the strength of the human spirit in the face of violence. From the holy sanctum of the Vatican, our next story plunges into the volatile political landscape of the 1980s. Imagine a world where a single bullet could alter the course of history. Join us as we delve into the harrowing assassination attempt on Ronald Reagan, just months into his presidency. Our next story takes us to March 30th, 1981, just two months into Ronald Reagan's presidency. Outside the Washington Hilton Hotel, the scene was set for an unexpected and dramatic event. John Hinckley Jr., driven by an obsession with actress Jodie Foster, lay in wait. As Reagan exited the hotel, Hinckley stepped forward, his heart pounding, and fired six shots. Chaos erupted. Reagan was hit, as were three others, including his press secretary, James Brady. The sound of gunfire echoed through the streets. Secret Service agents acted swiftly, shoving Reagan into his limousine. As the car sped away, Reagan, unaware he had been hit, felt a sharp pain. The bullet had ricocheted off the car and lodged near his lung. In the hospital, Reagan's humor shone through his pain. I hope you're all Republicans, he joked to the surgical team. The incident was more serious than initially thought, but Reagan's resilience and quick recovery astonished the nation. Hinckley was found not guilty by reason of insanity, and the attack led to significant changes in US gun laws. Reagan's brush with death strengthened his resolve and endeared him to the American public, illustrating the unpredictable dangers that leaders face. From the political stage of America, we moved to New Zealand, where a young Queen Elizabeth II faced a life-threatening situation during a royal tour. Stay tuned as we explore the daring attempt on her life and the remarkable calm she maintained. If you've enjoyed these incredible tales of resilience and survival, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to Ancestral Archives. Your support helps us continue to bring you more fascinating stories from history's hidden corners. Join our community and never miss an adventure through time. In October 1981, a young Queen Elizabeth II embarked on a royal tour of New Zealand, an event meant to strengthen ties and celebrate the unity of the Commonwealth. Little did she know, her life was about to be threatened 
in a moment of profound danger. Among the crowds gathered to welcome her was 17-year-old Christopher John Lewis, harboring a sinister plan. Concealed within the folds of his jacket was a 22 caliber rifle. As the Queen rode past, he took his shot. A single shot rang out, but the bullet missed its mark. The crowd's jubilant cheers masked the sound, and for a brief moment, the attempted assassination went unnoticed. Lewis fled, but his intent was clear. News of the attempt was initially suppressed to prevent public panic. Lewis, who had a troubled history and a fascination with notoriety, was quickly apprehended and charged with lesser offenses. The queen, ever composed, continued her tour, a symbol of steadfastness and grace under pressure. This incident underscored the persistent risks faced by public figures. Even in seemingly peaceful settings, Queen Elizabeth's poise and unflinching demeanor reinforced her image as a resilient and dedicated monarch. From the quiet streets of New Zealand, our next story shifts to the tumultuous world of Cold War politics. Picture a tropical island nation, its revolutionary leader targeted by a myriad of assassination plots. Join us as we delve into the astonishing survival of Fidel Castro. Fidel Castro, the indomitable leader of the Cuban Revolution, became one of the most targeted figures in modern history. Over his lifetime, Castro faced an extraordinary array of assassination attempts, many orchestrated by the CIA. The plots ranged from the ingenious to the absurd. Poisoned cigars designed to snuff out his life with a single puff, exploding seashells meant to detonate during his frequent diving trips, and even a toxic diving suit prepared for his use. One particularly bizarre plan involved a fountain pen rigged with a hypodermic needle. Yet, despite the ingenuity and persistence of his would-be assassins, Castro's meticulous security measures and uncanny luck kept him alive. Castro's survival became emblematic of his resilience and defiance. Each failed attempt not only reinforced his grip on power, but also became a propaganda tool, portraying him as a leader protected by fate itself against imperialist aggression. The relentless pursuit of his life highlighted the extreme tensions of the Cold War era and the lengths to which nations would go to eliminate perceived threats. Castro's enduring presence on the global stage was a testament to his survival skills and the complexities of geopolitical intrigue. But the shadowy world of espionage and political intrigue doesn't end here. Our next story takes us back to post-revolutionary Russia, where a revolutionary leader faced a near-fatal attack from within his own ranks. Stay with us as we uncover the harrowing assassination attempt on Vladimir Lenin. On August 30th, 1918, the streets of Moscow buzzed with the fervor of a new regime. Vladimir Lenin, the architect of the Bolshevik Revolution, was addressing a crowd, unaware that a deadly plot was about to unfold. Amidst the throng was Fania Kaplan, a socialist revolutionary who blamed Lenin for the betrayal of the revolution's ideals. Concealed within her coat was a revolver, its cold metal a stark contrast to the fiery passion in her heart. As Lenin exited the Michelson factory, Kaplan stepped forward, her hand steady despite the chaos around her. She fired three shots, two of which struck Lenin. The crowd erupted in panic, the acrid scent of gunpowder mixing with the scent of fear. Lenin was rushed to medical care, his life hanging by a thread. Surgeons worked frantically, and against the odds, Lenin survived. The bullets, however, could not be removed, leaving him in chronic pain. Kaplan, captured and unrepentant, was swiftly executed. Her actions triggered a brutal crackdown on political dissidents as Lenin's regime sought to fortify its fragile grip on power. This assassination attempt underscored the internal divisions and fierce ideological battles that marked the early Soviet era. Lenin's survival not only solidified his leadership, but also justified the intensification of the Red Terror, a campaign of political repression that would shape Soviet history for decades. From the icy streets of Moscow, we journey to the tumultuous heart of revolutionary France, where a daring plot aimed to stop one of history's most formidable leaders in his tracks. 
Join us as we explore the audacious attempt on Napoleon Bonaparte's life. In the aftermath of the French Revolution, Napoleon Bonaparte had risen to power, steering France through turbulent times. But on Christmas Eve, 1800, a sinister plot lay in wait as he prepared for a night at the opera. The conspirators, hoping to end Napoleon's reign, devised the Machine Infernal plot. They packed a large wine cask with gunpowder, intending to detonate it as Napoleon's carriage passed by the Rue saint niquez As Napoleon's carriage approached, the bomb exploded with a deafening roar. Flames and smoke filled the narrow street, debris scattered, and innocent bystanders were caught in the deadly blast. The ground trembled and screams pierced the night. Miraculously, Napoleon's carriage had passed the spot seconds before the explosion. He emerged unscathed, but the attack left many dead and wounded. The conspirators were quickly apprehended and faced swift justice. Napoleon's survival reinforced his aura of invincibility and galvanized his supporters. It also gave him a pretext to tighten his grip on power, quashing dissent and consolidating his rule. The plot's failure only seemed to cement his destiny as France's dominant leader. From the grandeur of Imperial France, we turn our gaze to the British Isles, where a determined Irish militant group plotted a devastating attack on one of Britain's most controversial prime ministers. Stay with us as we recount the harrowing attempt on Margaret Thatcher's life. Our final story brings us to the serene coastal town of Brighton, England. The town was bustling with activity on October 12, 1984, as the Conservative Party conference occurred at the Grand Hotel. However, Beneath the surface of this political gathering lay a deadly plan orchestrated by the Irish Republican Army, IRA. Margaret Thatcher, Britain's first female prime minister, was known for her uncompromising policies and tough stance on the IRA. This made her a prime target for assassination. The IRA had planted a bomb with the intent to kill Thatcher and her cabinet. At 2.54 a.m., a bomb concealed within a bathroom wall detonated, ripping through the hotel. The explosion was catastrophic, creating a scene of utter devastation. Flames and debris engulfed the building, and the air was thick with smoke and the scent of burning materials. The sound of the explosion echoed through the streets, waking the entire town. Despite the chaos, Thatcher and her husband Dennis miraculously escaped unharmed. The blast killed five people and injured 30, leaving a trail of destruction and sorrow. Thatcher's immediate response was resolute. She insisted that the conference continue, demonstrating her defiance and determination. Thatcher's survival and her subsequent speech at the conference solidified her image as the Iron Lady. The attack intensified her resolve to combat terrorism and strengthened her leadership. The attempt also highlighted the ongoing conflict and the lengths to which the IRA would go to further their cause. From the resilience of Andrew Jackson to the unyielding spirit of Margaret Thatcher, these leaders faced death but emerged stronger, their legacies forever changed by these harrowing experiences. If you've enjoyed these incredible tales of resilience and survival, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to Ancestral Archives. Your support helps us continue to bring you more fascinating stories from history's hidden corners. Join our community and never miss an adventure through time.